Before we begin with this week's Get Good video, a special thanks to Brickster for contributing artwork for this week's Get Good thumbnail. A link to their channel will be in the description and pinned comment. Welcome to a video on how to get good at the BFN scientist, the support character that is capable of making everyone he heals next to immortal and the proud owner of so many healing metals that healthcare centers would be jealous of him. Let's get started. The BFN scientist is a support class and is the designated healer for the zombie faction. They only have 100 health making them fairly easily to kill against burst sources and outside of certain upgrades don't have that many damage options. Though despite being labeled as a healer, this motherfucker looks like your stereotypical crackhead that experiments on some of the weirdest shit known to man and he doesn't give a fuck about what you think. The scientist's primary weapon of choice is of a shotgun-like weapon that can actually be used at mid-range quite effectively. The weapon fires at 90 rounds per minute and has 10 ammo per clip before needing to take a lengthy 2.2 second reload. Each shot fired fires out 11 pellets in a fixed spread with no form of deviation and the pattern becomes more compressed when aiming down sights. Each of the pellets can deal 2.84 damage for a normal hit and 3.41 damage for a critical hit, if one is skilled enough and is able to connect all 11 pallets to a target, they can deal a maximum of 31.24 damage for a normal shot and up to 37.49 damage if they manage to land all of them as crits. The weapon does not have any form of damage drop off, though the projectile velocity is rather slow and it does slow down at mid range, causing it to have quite the noticeable arc at a distance because of how the weapon functions. If you plan on either going on the offensive or have to defend yourself against an enemy, you should get as close as possible as to ensure the highest possible chance of connecting all of the pellets to the enemy. Though like mentioned earlier, aiming down sights does reduce the spread of the pellets, so if you're confident in your ability to aim, then feel free to essentially harass enemies at mid-range. Though long-range combat is not recommended, not only because your projectiles will be traveling as slow as a rat P main without hyper, but because the shot isn't a single projectile but many smaller ones, you could miss out on some potential damage output which could cost you fights and end up having your team flaming you for not healing them. Speaking of which, let us get into scientist kit and start with his first and primary ability, the heal hose. The heal hose is your bread and butter as a support class and allows you to heal your allies and allow them to get their fucking jobs done. Whilst active, the heal hose replenishes health at 20.85 health per second and has just over 12 and a half meters range. The heal hose does not require line of sight, allowing you to heal both through enemies and solid surfaces. Though if you use your primary weapon whilst healing, then it will turn off the heal hose. This shit is essentially your best supportive ability, not only because of how much it can do, but unlike Sunflower's heal beam, the heal hose can heal multiple allies simultaneously if they all happen to be clumped together within the same area, allowing you to not only heal multiple allies to full health, but to also grant them their maximum overheal allowance. The heal hose also has a small lingering heal over time effect for when you stop healing them. This can be useful if you have to juggle across multiple teammates who are on different sides of you and spaced out. The heal hose does not have any form of cooldown and as such can be used as much as you need to. The heal hose also removes any form of negative status effect such as Jinx, Fire or Grody Goo. The scientist's second ability is Warp. This shit got a massive upgrade going from Garden Warfare 2 to BFN. Not only in now holding 3 charges as opposed to 2, but now the warp operates based on which direction you are currently moving in, so if you're moving backwards, the warp will teleport you backwards, and so on. 
the warp will teleport you 15 meters in the direction of your choice, and each warp only has a 9.5 second cooldown. This effectively makes warp your go-to escape tool, not only thanks to its instant activation, but also because of the ability's additional charge and much shorter cooldowns, allowing you to either engage in fights you know for certain you can win, or disengage from fights you know you have no business with. This swiftly brings us to scientist's third and final ability, known as the sticky healy thingy. This sticky piece of shit causes a scientist to toss a sticky ball forward. The sticky ball is capable of homing in onto allies and enemies and can stick to them. When it gets stuck to a surface, it lasts for 3 seconds and heals anyone within the radius at a massive 30.33 health per second. This sticky piece of magical shit is essentially an emergency exit to any kind of situation that requires you to be full health at a moment's notice and is useful for if the target you are currently healing is about to take a shit ton of damage. Though you should use it sparingly since once it is casted it will go on a lengthy 32 second cooldown. So be sure to reserve this powerful source of burst healing only for emergencies. Now when we take a look at scientists upgrades, many of them do grant him useful buffs that either enhance his performance or open up the window of opportunity in terms of what he can do, both offensively and defensively. Three upgrades I wish to explore in particular are Super Savior, Power Wash, and Dolphin Blasting. Super Savior allows the scientist to jump and use his abilities whilst he is performing a resurrection. This may not sound like much, but with him being a high priority target and with the kit he has being able to self heal or immediately warp away from a revive that is not worth it can save Flim in a lot of scenarios. Power Wash increases how much healing the heal hose does when aiming down sights by more than 40% and increases its range up to a maximum of just under 21 meters. This upgrade is perfect for those who play a more passive, solely supportive scientist who wish to do nothing more than to provide healing for their team. And Dolphin Blasting causes the scientist's weapon to shoot faster upon getting a kill and can stack up to 3 times, lasting for a maximum of 15 seconds. This upgrade is more useful for scientist players who wish to go for more aggressive playstyles. In terms of strengths, scientist can be an outright powerful healing machine capable of keeping his team happy and healthy at all times. His warp allows him to get in and out of fights at a moment's notice. His shotgun whilst not the most powerful thing in the world when paired with certain upgrades can allow him to easily deal with enemies that come to kill him. However, with scientist status as a healer, he will be a high priority target, especially with how much he can do. His weapon, whilst fairly powerful with certain upgrades, is poor at long distances due to the slow travel time and projectile gravity. Additionally, unlike Sunflower, who can use both her primary weapon and healing ability simultaneously, the scientist cannot, forcing him to pick and choose. Thanks to this guide, you will now be the master of making your team invincible and receive death threats and hate mail because of your now unkillable team as you run away from any fight instantaneously. Be sure to come back for the next episode next week. Thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe for more shit like this. Have fun.